Uh, Let's open up with a word of prayer and we'll get into the word. God, we love you and we thank you so much for this day, this new day. Um, It is a gift from you. And uh, Father, would you help us all to cherish this day and to not take lightly the responsibility that lies before us and the opportunities that lie before us this day. What happened yesterday and the days before does not matter when it comes to the potential of this day. So let us go into this day, Lord, approaching it as the gift that it is with great attitudes and humble hearts, and let us be your servants accomplishing your will this day. We love you and we thank you for it in your name. Amen. Um, I marvel as read the story of Joseph, and as I am sure we all have, we... we have read this story many, many times. In fact, uh, I am sure if you grew up in, in any church context, um, this is probably one of the stories that you remember from your earliest of ages, right? As you were told the, the different stories or the different facets of Joseph's story in Sunday school or VBS, Uh, I'm sure it's a story that all of us are familiar with, yet it is amazing to me that no matter how many times we read it, we reread it, we hear messages about it, there is something that is always so inspiring about this story and about this man's life um, that for me it challenges me. And I, I find I always learn something new that maybe challenges me in a little bit different way. Um, as we have been going through this, this lesson, one of the things that has just stuck out to me is just how much, um, how much Joseph must have truly trusted in the Lord. Um, certainly he wasn't a perfect man. Uh, we, we know that. Um, but through all of these different situations, I've, I've been asking myself, uh, man, could I, could I trust God like that? Um, because it, it seems, it, it seems, and we, we know Joseph's dad later would say when his brothers, right, came home to, to, uh, um, to try to get his other son to carry back to Egypt. And Joseph's father said, man, I have two of my sons gone now. It feels like everything is against me. And, and I, it, it, it seems like that's how Joseph must have felt in, in a lot of these different stories we read, that everything was against him. Um, and, and there's this passage in Psalms, Psalms 105, that, that speaks of Joseph. And so today, rather than going to Genesis, we're going to go to, to Psalm 105, uh, beginning, God bless you, uh, beginning in verse 16. Moreover, he, God, called for a famine in the land, and he destroyed all the provision of bread. You know, so many times when bad things when bad things happen in our lives, I think we're very quick to to just point the finger at at the devil. And I, I think sometimes we might give the devil a little too much credit. Um, you know, it did say that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Uh, certainly, the devil tempted him. But the devil couldn't have tempted him if, the, if God hadn't have led him there, right? And, and here in this, in this story, it says that God called for the famine in the land. Um, that he destroyed all the provision of bread. But he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. That says to us, that prison that Joseph was in, it was a real prison. I mean, it it was not easy street. It wasn't some some uh, white-collar facility somewhere. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Um, that That wasn't fun. 
But, but listen to this, verse 19. Until the time that His Word came to pass, the Word of the Lord tested him. I, I want you to get that, that last part in your, in your spirit. Until the time that His Word came to pass, the Word of the Lord tested him. Um, now, a lot of us have probably heard the, the different Greek words for word with rhema and logos. These aren't, these aren't those. These are two different Hebrew, Hebrew words. Uh, this, this first part of verse 19, the, the word, is, is the most common, common use of the, the word, word. Sounds great, doesn't it? The, this most common use of the word word in the, in the Old Testament, and I'm not going to bore you with the, the Hebrew pronunciation. Actually, I just can't say the Hebrew pronunciation. <laughs> um, but it is, it's, it is in the Old Testament uh, 1,439 nine times, and it refers to, to the spoken word, okay? So uh, until the time... Until the time that the word that God had spoken over Joseph's life had come to pass. Uh, remember, God said, God spoke a word over Joseph's life. Joseph, um, your brothers are going to bow down before you. Um, and, and you're, you're going you're, you're to save many people, right? And, and Joseph at first thought that this was a, a power trip. And, and so he, he approached his brothers with this, with this word that God given, had given him as if this was, this was some amazing, amazing plan that God had just to promote him to a position of power. But it really wasn't about power. It was about God's redemptive plan being played out in the lives of, of his people. And, and it took Joseph... A long time to fully understand that, right? But God's plan for our life is never about power and prestige for us. It's always associated with bringing Him glory, right? And and so uh, the psalmist said, until the time that this word over Joseph's life was accomplished. And and just let me remind you uh, that that the Bible tells us that God has God has spoken His word over each of our lives. Um, whether you recognize it or not, whether you even believe it or not, really doesn't matter. But, but God has a plan and a dream and a destiny for your life. He has spoken that, that over you. And, and I know for some that's very hard to believe. We, we are so good at walking in insecurity and, and, and in sometimes even false humility, right? Uh, as if God couldn't use us. D- do you really think that, that you are too small of a tool, that you are, you are too insignificant of a person, that the God of this universe couldn't use you? Do you think that highly of yourself? Right? Our God is so great. He is so amazing that, that he, he, t- put, he finds treasure in these jars of clay, Right? God has a plan for every single one of us. He's spoken a word over our life. He has a destiny over our life. But I want you to see this because this is so important when it comes to trusting God. And not just trusting God on Sunday morning or not just trusting God with certain parts of our life. But this is so important if we're going to trust the Lord, as Proverbs says, with all all of ourselves, with all of our heart. This is so important. Listen, un- until the time that His Word came to pass, the Word of the Lord tested Him. The Word of the Lord tested Him. Now, this, this Word uh, is the literal Word of God. Uh, it's, it's used like 30-something times in the Old Testament. And, and most of the time that this word is used, it's referring to the Torah. Like this is, 
the written word, the literal word of God. And it, and it says here that the literal word of God tested Joseph um, until, until the destiny or the spoken word of his life uh, came, came to pass. Um, man, this isn't an easy thing. Because we, we would love, love to just step into our destinies, to step into God's full, uh, the fullness of God's dreams for our life um, in, in some kind of easy fashion. Um, without all the test, without all the heartache. I, I heard Charles, uh, Charles Swindoll say something at a, at a conference one time that has always stuck with me. He said, the person that God chooses to use greatly, he first breaks greatly. Uh, he crushes, I think was his exact words, he crushes greatly. That's not a very comforting thing. Why would that happen? Why would God allow his word, his spirit to test us in a way that seemed to crush us at times because remember God will not allow you to step into the fullness of his dream for your life if you do not have the character to sustain you in that place of destiny many of us if God was to put us right now in a place of living out the ultimate fulfillment of his dream for our life we don't yet have the character in our life to sustain being in that place of power. We don't have the character in our life to sustain the responsibility that would come with that. And, and so in some ways you could say the testing that God puts us through is really a grace that He gives us because He wants to see us succeed. Right? And, and so how do, we, how do we trust God? How do we stay focused on Him in the midst of this, this testing? Um, D.L. Moody says, Trust in yourself and you are doomed to disappointment. Trust in your friends and they will die and leave you. Trust in money and you may have it taken from you. Trust in your reputation and some slanderous tongue may blast it. But trust in God and you are to never, or you are never to be confounded in time or eternity. Now, I, I actually pulled these. I would love to give, give credit on this, um, but I, I wasn't, wasn't very good with my sourcing here. Um, if any of you have interest, email me and I can find the source of this. But I did pull these seven ways to keep your trust. Uh, off of God, off of an online, off off of an online devotional. I believe it was off of God, Bible Gateway. Uh, seven ways to trust in God. I won't go through all these scriptures because you'll know most of them, uh, but most of them come straight from Proverbs three. Uh, first of all, don't depend on you. Don't depend on you. Uh, we live in a world where trust must be earned, and it seems to be in short supply. Um, and and the, only, the only way to, to fully trust in God is to do exactly what Proverbs 3 says, put our full trust in Him, and to lean not on our own understanding. Our, our understanding will disappoint us. I'm sure Joseph, Joseph found this out pretty quick because his understanding were his brothers were going to bow down before him. But boy, as he started spouting off that dream, that didn't get him anywhere, did it? Um, and, and, and so I think he learned very quick, if I'm, if I'm going to make it through this, I better put my trust in him and not depend upon myself. Uh, secondly, uh, we need to constantly cry out to God. Um, Surrendering to God, surrendering to God, I, I think it begins with our, with our thoughts 
and, and, and the words of our, of our mouth. We need more than, than just a commitment to depend on Him. I think daily we need to be crying out to Him for help. Daily, the challenges that we face in our lives are too big to ignore the discipline of prayer, to ignore the discipline of coming to Him in submission and saying, the challenge is too big for me, God. I cry out to You for Your help in this day because I am inadequate in my own means and my own ability to navigate through it. Daily, we must do it. Third, we must run from evil. Run from evil. Remember what we talked about with, with Potiphar's wife. Day by day, she came at him. Day by day. And, and, and we must remember in our life, the enemy never takes a day off. And what did Joseph do when it got really heated? He just ran, even to the point where, I mean, his coat was left in, in her hand. Right? I mean, that's how desperate of a situation it is. But he, he fleed the appearance of evil. He got out of there. We must put ourselves in positions where our minds are guarded and our steps are quick to flee from evil. Uh, fourth, we have to put God first in, in our lives. Um, I am amazed. I am amazed. Let, let me read this one part of, of Proverbs 3. Uh, this is right after trust in the Lord with all of your heart, right? He says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Then your barns will be filled with, to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Um, you know, it doesn't matter to me if you believe in things like the principles of tithing in the Word. I know there's so much debate on that. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Here, here's, here's what I do believe, that God expects the first fruits of our lives uh, in every area, not just with our money, but God expects it with our time, with our commitment. Uh, God, God expects it and deserves it. And, 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 and there is a principle that we will see all through the Bible. When we will trust God with the first fruits of our lives, we will always find that He takes care of the other stuff. It, it, you, you can test them and you can try them. It works. When you trust God with the first, He takes care of the rest. And it's amazing to me how many people want the blessings of God. Uh, remember, the love of God is unconditional in your life. There is nothing you could do to get God to love you any more or any less than He does right now. But God's blessings are always conditional. It's always an if and then with God's blessings. We have to do our part, and we can be assured if we, if we are faithful to what His Word has said, He is going to be faithful to His. And in every area of our lives... We want to we get through the tough times. Trust God. Put God first. Trust Him with the first part of your day. Trust Him with everything that you have. Um, put God first in your life. Fifth, check yourself by God's Word. Check yourself by God's Word. Uh, many people say, hey, man, we hear our, our teenagers say that, and I hope we don't always give them the advice of, I'm just going to follow my heart. I hope we don't tell them, hey, just follow your heart. You know what the Bible says? The heart is deceitful above all things. My God, if we got these guys just following their hearts, we're in trouble. They're in trouble, right? Uh, we don't need to follow our heart. We need to follow the Word of God. And, and, and I believe that when we get a heart for God, a lot of times we can allow our heart to come into conformity to the Word of God. But a lot of times our heart will tell us something that's in contradiction to the Word of God. And when that's the case, you better let the Word of God trump that. You better let the Word of God win out. Trust. Put your confidence in the Word of God and check yourself by the Word of God. Uh, six, listen to the Holy Spirit. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Paul told Timothy, guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in you. I, I believe the Holy Spirit is sort of our, our GPS system as, as believers. Right? And, it, and if we will just allow... Why did Jesus give us the Holy Spirit? 
right? He said, I'm going away to the Father, but I got something better for you. You no longer have Jesus or God with you in the form of Jesus. You now have God in you, the form of His Holy Spirit. And He's going to comfort you and He's going to guide you into all righteousness. And yet, how many times do we not trust what God has deposited inside of us through His Holy Spirit? Listen to the Holy Spirit. And seventh, rest in God's love. Rest in God's love. Man, don't be anxious. Don't be anxious in anything, right? But in prayer and supplication, make your requests made known unto God. Rest in God's love love because he cares for you cast your cares upon him the word says why because he cares for you god loves you and he cares for you today rest in that rest in that and is i i think if we can do those things just like joseph when we find ourselves uh, in a time of of great testing when we find our time our, ourselves in a, in a time of of, of maybe great trial we can stay focused on God and we can keep our trust in Him uh, just like Joseph did because we realize He cares for us. Let's pray. God, we love You. We thank You for this day. Again, Father, we surrender it to You and we ask, Father, for the same Spirit that was upon Joseph that helped him to trust You in the middle of all of that testing will help us, Lord, to trust You as well. Uh, Lord, let our confidence not be shaken, but let our trust be fully in you this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Bless you guys.